Welcome to the block party. We are back another episode. Uh, my co-host and Hall of Famer, uh, Mr. Coburn, how you doing? A Hall of Fame of what? I just exactly. wa- I wanted to work that in. I, I wanted to see if Hagel would like flinch at all when I called you a Hall of Famer. So, uh, Brandon Hagel, our guest, man, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. This is great. We're in like some secret dressing room. Where are we, Kobe? I've never. They've never let me in here before. Yeah, they, they shouldn't let you in a lot of places. Is, but I, I stole a free water from. I don't know if those are for the players or not. But the, the bills in the mail. Okay, sure. <laughs> they're taking from my paycheck. Yeah, where, where is this a practice this dressing room or what is this? Because. The guys were just out there practicing. Sounded like a hard practice after the game last night. Uh, Coop, you know, we heard him through the walls here as we were uh, testing stuff. But wh- when do the guys come in here, Kobe? It's like the uh, use for training camp, okay. I think, and then other teams that come in, the auxiliary room kind of thing. So, All right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, listen, Mr. Hagel, the first thing I want to know is, it like, people call you, is it Hags, Hags? Uh, they were saying that of- officially your nickname in Chicago was Bagel. Is that something that, is that true? And do you want to carry that with you to Tampa or can we drop it? Yeah, I mean, anything kind of goes for me. I think I, I think a lot of guys call me a bunch of different things. I kind of just make up words as, as the day goes on. So, Hags, um, Bagel just kind of started there. I mean. Um, do you enjoy bagels? Yeah, yeah, they're decent. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just such a Tim Horton's bagel. You can't go wrong. There. Okay, I just found that weird. I was like, well, I'm not calling the guy bagel. And the social team's like, no, that's what they called him. And he embraced it. So I wanted to find out for sure if that was the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean... Yeah, I guess. Hey, well, <laughs> I didn't really have a choice. You said really. you you said you know the guys make things up, but we heard that like you're the king of making up words. I guess during the injury to your foot in the playoffs last year, you said you chalked your foot. Yeah, I mean, I that's I mean that's why I got all the nicknames. I think people call me Chalker, Hoover. <laughs> just like I don't know, my foot was chalked. Um, I, Hoove as my foot. I don't know. So it's kind of like a uh, Western Canadian lingo. Is yeah, it not, yeah. Right? I think you, I think you can you can I can relate a little that. bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I was so excited um, when I looked at the sheet and I saw your you know your birthplace, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And I was like, oh man, yeah, another Saskatchewan guy. Can't have too many Saskatchewan guys. And then when I talked to you in Florida, mm-hmm. you told me that uh, you were born there, but you grew up just outside of Edmonton. Uh, was it Mo- Moville? Morinville. Morinville, Morinville yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was out there not for too long, but uh, my entire family's out there, like my dad's brothers and sisters and my mom's sisters and parents, and everyone's still out there. So uh, it's still kind of my neck of the woods. I'm always out there in the summer visiting people and out there for weeks at a time. So, so one of the most important things, besides hockey in Saskatchewan, Seth, is the CFL, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Oh, really? Oh. oh my God. It's, 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 it's a big Ride thing. So die. where did your allegiance fall? Cause, uh, and, and the interesting thing about CF, CFL. Is that the one Doug Flutie played for? Yeah, no? absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. But they had a slogan when, I, and I, they probably still do, but the slogan was our balls are bigger. Are they? <laughs> that was because the ball, the ball is actually bigger than the NFL ball. Okay. And that was the big thing. So what, what, interesting. Yeah. So Higgs, where does your allegiance lie? Are you, yeah, a, I mean, are you uh, a roughie or no? Yeah, I'm a roughie. I'd say I'm a roughie, but I mean, um, back in the day, I think when I was younger, I mean, I only got into NFL about like three, four years ago because it was always like the riders, like back in the day, I, I can remember a couple names names like Weston Dressler and few of those guys out there so um i don't follow too much but my family's still all over it there so i'll hear about it but yeah so in a little bit of a deep dive we've done on you your sports <laughs> your sports gambling in the room with some of the boys i guess i've heard you've had uh, uh, a lot of success uh yeah we'll, we'll keep it at that I mean, <laughs> definitely not a lot of success but it's fine i mean i like football sundays most of the days sundays off so i mean just just do it for fun and then come to the rink and talk about it, shoot the shit with some of the guys over it at the rink. It's, it's always good. You, you doing fantasy football or are you guys just, you know, doing stuff for the games? Uh, we do a little bit of um, just uh, DraftKings every week. Okay. So there's a little bit of bragging rights. See your name at the top and then you'll see it at the bottom. It kind of fluctuates pretty good. It's all a guessing game, right? <laughs> yeah, for those things. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's like, hey, okay, great. I got uh, Patrick Mahomes. Now I got to find a guy for $200. So <laughs> then you're, you're combing the bottom of that lineup. Um, all right. So, so one of the things I want to kind of talk about is, uh, you know, when you started here in Tampa, you know, last year. So um, 
did you think that you were going to get traded and, and how did you find out? A lot of guys these days are finding out on Twitter from Frank Saravelli that they ended up getting <laughs> dealt. How, how did you find out that you were coming to Tampa? Yeah, um, I definitely didn't think I was getting traded. I had no idea. Obviously, I saw the rumors um, earlier, way before the trade deadline. Then they kind of like settled off and then we were out to Minnesota and um, one of the team management guys or I guess the travel guy um, kind of came and grabbed me he's like hey come here for a sec i'm like trying to think like what's what's going to happen and I'm you like, think you're in trouble or something yeah i'm like dang and then we're going to the elevator i'm like ah oh, i traded and he's like i'm like all right so get up there they kind of tell me that i've been um traded thanked me um but they told me they couldn't they couldn't tell me where i was going really so, um, they said it was a good team <laughs> um had a chance of winning the stanley cup but we can't tell you because there's a few things that need to make sure it's completely done. So I went home and, um, so what teams of, were you thinking of? I mean, come on, what, who, who was in your head? I who, mean, who did you start kicking around? I, honestly, I never heard a rumor about Tampa to be honest. So Tampa definitely wasn't up there. I heard obviously like a little bit of Toronto, um, the Florida, um, oh, yeah. some other, some other teams, but I, I, I really had no idea. I was kind of just like, I thought it was going to be me and someone else going together, but it was just myself. So that kind of narrowed it down that I have no idea. Um, and then obviously, I think a little bit later, obviously, like you said, you're going to find out over Twitter before you get a phone call. Um, that was the case. My mom called me. She saw it. So. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, I haven't heard yet. And then a few minutes later, obviously, you get a get a phone call. But You had a pretty good idea what you're going to be like the trade your trade value was didn't you yeah i think i think that was uh i knew i mean i didn't know personally but obviously everyone sees people or sees things and hear people talk and what it's going to cost blah 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 blah, yeah. blah. so um because we I mean, saw we saw an article or we saw an interview you did in uh in new jersey you scored a hat trick yeah. and then they came out and asking you about it and you're like yeah i know my trade value probably went up i'm uh like two first prospects and like mcdavid's you know <laughs> only thing tampa couldn't throw in was mcdavid i guess yeah, right yeah i think it was just uh one of those things because obviously they asked me throughout the week about oh um you're worth a first round there was articles out i guess saying that be a first rounder and a, pro a good prospect for Brandon and stuff like that. So they're at, the media was asking me about it. And, uh, and then I went out there and scored my first hat trick and they were kind of like, Oh, what are you worth? Uh, <laughs> two first rounders and a prospect. No, I said, yeah, a couple first two prospects and possibly McDavid. But <laughs> yeah, of course. Messing around. But I mean, it, came to reality kind of it was weird when when they make a deal like that and you go okay you know multiple first round picks prospects they're bringing them in you know to help win a stanley cup i mean being so young i mean obviously you played with you know Taze and and kane did you feel did you feel pressure last year and and, and maybe you didn't know it until you know reflecting back on the season yeah definitely i think obviously you try to tell yourself like don't worry about it just go out there and play but when you're traded for the amount i did get traded for obviously there's a lot of people that's not even just like obviously the not the team and the management they want me to come in and play my game but obviously the outside world is <laughs> wants you to score 100 goals and then they'll be happy so it kind of gets to you and especially when you come in you're struggling a little bit then then things start turning I tried to convince myself that it wasn't bothering me and I just wanted to kind of continue and get better but at the same time you got to come in and um, these guys are Stanley Cup champions the last two years. You come in, you're, you're one of the newer guys. I mean, it's they were more than, they were so welcoming and made me fit in. But yet again, you're living in a hotel for a month and you don't know the area. And the weirdest part was, is hockey's such a small world that you'd think getting traded, you'd know one person. I didn't know a single person oh, man. on this team. I just knew of, but never really had a conversation. So who did you, who'd you bond with? Who'd you click with? Uh, yeah. you, I mean, do you have any friends right now on the team? No, I'm not, sure. not going to ask you that. No, but. That's why he's doing the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's available today. Everybody went out golfing now. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. Oh, us. We heard golfing. We heard you, the guys when you got traded here. You, golfing uh, used kind of a nice way for you to meet the guys. Yeah, it was everything. good. I mean, they were they were awesome. I mean, obviously, all the guys texted me, welcoming me. Um, but it's just like going to a new job. I mean, everyone's going to be great. Everyone's going to welcome you in. And um, But it's just that that feeling as a person where you're like, you don't want to overstep boundaries. You don't want to do things. You don't know like what guys routines are, or where you should be, or if this guy's supposed to go here and 
just little things like that that you need to adapt to. It had nothing to do with the guys. I think it's just personal thing, going into a new place, new faces, trying to figure it out. I've never been traded before. I didn't experience it in junior, so... Um, Not a lot of people do. I mean, that's why I like to bring it up on this podcast. I mean, it's just something athletes can relate to regular people. We don't know what it's like to be traded. I yeah. mean, it doesn't happen in that in that world. So that's why I like to get the perspective. I mean, it's happened to, you know, Kobe a couple of times. So, I mean, it happened to you so young, especially, you know, for so much. So, yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. So, I mean, who 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 embraced you? Like uh, when I asked you, like, who embraced you when you first came over here? You said everybody welcomed you, but it had to be somebody that that you gravitated towards. Yeah, I think Patty was awesome for that as well. I think Patty was really good uh, way of just kind of always asking me um, go for dinners on the road and um, stuff like that. I mean, killer as well. I mean, those guys have been here for so long. Um, are I guess not patty to say but killer's been here for so long patty's won stanley cups he knows what it's like to 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 win and um knows what it takes to invite someone in and make them part of the culture as soon as they can so that they can have a good chance at winning a stanley cup kobe who took you under their wing when you first came into the league i think there was a bunch of guys you first when i first came up there was guys that were kind of like around the same age as me that you kind of are always hanging out with. And then there's older guys that kind of show you a different way as well. So it's it's kind of a mix of guys. It's, you know. The Pronger? I thought Pronger was. Yeah, that, that, no, my first year was in Atlanta. So there was guys like Jimmy Slater, Kari Lettinen, who were the same age as me. And then uh, there were some older guys um, that uh, kind of like stepped up when uh, going over to their houses and you feel like one of their kids kind of thing, right? So <laughs> it's just a different dynamic. But it's important though, right? I mean, it's important to embrace the, the yeah, new, you, new teammates. Yeah, you, you want to try to like get into the fold right away and it sounds like eggs you know from everybody i talked to he he's, he fit like a, a nicely fit glove right into the team yeah i mean that was the weird part too i think coming here i mean in chicago i was like kind of right in the middle for age like we had a lot of younger guys few old, not as and i come here and i'm like second youngest or the youngest on the team so um it was weird that way too i mean you just go from kind of just being the middle man you got options of younger older you kind of just just how it goes and then coming here i think it's all i was just the youngest so yeah there's a little different that way so you're like firm you f- you feel firmly established in the nhl now you're like you're rolling you're on the top line one of the best teams in the league but i found really interesting your your journey to the nhl it's not like a lot of guys you kind of were a little bit later bloomer you, you kind of took a couple different chances, but can you elaborate a little bit on kind of how, how you got to this point? Yeah, obviously it was uh, a lot different from other people. I obviously got drafted um, as a, in the, well, I never got to start in the Bantam draft. I never got drafted there. That's um, in the WHL, right? WHL yep. draft. Yeah. And then I uh, was, end up going to go to school and then Red Deer. Um, I played a couple games in the like junior league. Um, and then Red Deer came and they were hosting Memorial Cup that year. So I went over and practiced there and decided to stay there. So obviously played there. Um, ended up getting drafted in the sixth round um, to Buffalo. Um, went through all that. They didn't end up signing me. So I kind of, oh well. Um, went back to, um, went to Montreal's camp in the summer. Nothing really came out of that. And then kind of came back as a 20-year-old year. And um, Brent Sutter was my coach and he was... Uh, nothing but the greatest to me. He was always, he always wanted me to succeed. He was hard on me, he made me the person I am today and the work ethic and everything it came down to. Um, and if I showed him that he was going to do everything he could to get me to the next level. And I think I give him a lot of props for doing that. And then obviously I think it was 20 to 15 games in. I signed with Chicago, played a year in the AHL. And the weird thing is actually, I got called up the COVID year the very last game before the break, I was my first NHL game. So I played and the next day the season was shut down. And then the next year, obviously. Um, and did you go to Switzerland? Is yeah, it- I went to Switzerland. Uh, I got bored at home <laughs> during COVID. So I thought Switzerland would be a pretty cool experience. Went over there just to play some hockey, went there for a month or two, um, came back and um, 
kind of NHL career started from there. As you mentioned, Brent Sutter, he's, uh, he's got a, a, a great reputation. He's been, he's the owner, the general manager, the coach mm-hmm. in Red Deer for a long time. But there's, um, and he was the coach when I played junior in the Western Hockey League. And there's some great stories about um, Sutter. I know the one, a couple of buddies that I had played there, they had a tough week. They weren't scoring goals. And they came home and Brent told them, all right, for the weekend games, you guys, no more graphite sticks. <laughs> And he made them play the, the next two games with all wood sticks, except there wasn't enough wood sticks. They didn't have enough wood sticks. So guys were coming off the bench, handing their stick <laughs> to the next guy to go out and play. And they won the next two games. It was just like, I, I've I would, heard that I'm story, interested yeah. to hear like some Brent I've, Sutter because he's a, heard that story. it's tough love, right? You, some yeah, guys are definitely tough love. And I mean, obviously I think that's what makes you a better person. And, um, we had our battles, we screaming matches at each other, but he was always like, I've never met someone that just like when he's outside the rink, he's one of the best people I've ever met. And you can sit down and have a conversation with him. But when he's at the rink, he's there to get you better as a person. Um, I think one of the good things he always talked about is like not everyone in this dressing room is going to make make the NHL. So he wants to set you up to be successful in your jobs down the road. That's why he's always wants the best out of you. And um, obviously some guys take it take it differently um there's one way to take it and there's one way not to take it and um for myself i always saw it as um he wants the best for me either if i'm gonna go be a teacher or whatnot at uh so is that what you wanted to if you yeah. weren't a hockey player you're gonna be a teacher yeah yeah Brandon, mr it. brandon hagel <laughs> <laughs> mr hagel i don't know if any people let me check your homework kid <laughs> couldn't be an english teacher that's <laughs> did you like the jerseys from last night it's okay if you didn't yeah, I mean, there there's a lot going on for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are they responsible for how, how you guys played? Like, do you feel like, oh, man, do you look at yourself and go, oh, this is not, I do not look good at all. I, I can't play well tonight. Uh, I mean, there's no excuses, but I wish we could use that one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most surreal moment you've had? Like I said, you played with like Patrick Kane and Taze, and then you've come down here and, you know, it's like so far in your career, you've played with like nine Hall of Famers. Have you had a moment where you're just like, I, I can't believe this is happening? Yeah, I mean, it's happened so fast for myself. I think um, I played my first year, obviously. Um, and by the end of it, I was playing with those type of players. And then obviously last year, um, I played with them. And even coming in here, I think I've played with a great group of different type of players, I think, which is making me a better player player as well I played with the Caners I played with the Tasers then you come in and play with the Killorns you play with the Sorellis completely different games but they're incredible at what they do and um, how they portray themselves and and then you come and play with the Kucherovs and the points it's it's been an unbelievable career for myself so far being getting the opportunity to play with these guys I wouldn't trade it for anything and definitely don't take it for granted because like you said these guys are Hall of Famers and um, it's it's pretty cool to do it in my I'm only three years into my NHL career. Do you take uh, a sense of pride that you were on that shutdown defensive line in the playoffs last year with, I believe, was it uh, Killer and Sorelli yeah. that you were on? So I just thought that that was, you know, the other team's best line goes out there and Coop sends you guys out there and, and you guys were absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I know that you're playing right during a, with a fractured foot during that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, how how did you take a sense of, of pride that, that, you know, Coop said, hey, I'm going to, this is one of my shutdown guys. Yeah, it was, I liked it because when I came in, I was trying to find myself. I was trying to find the role and they were trying to find the role to fit me in. And I felt like when we finally got there, I had a purpose. I had a, a role to go on the ice. I didn't care if I scored. I didn't care if I got, got points. They, we had one job. Um, getting a goal was just a plus for us, I think. Um, but we went out there. We did our job. We tried to grind those top lines down, get them tired. Um, create offense. Obviously, we wanted to go out there. It wasn't just to not score, just to shut down. We were trying to score. Um, it didn't go our way sometimes, but I think um, it, it was good. I think we all embraced it. We came closer as as a line as well. I think we always talked about it. it was never about oh we almost scored there. It was like yeah we like we did a good job at hemming those guys down there, keeping them down, and then obviously you got the points or the Kucherovs, the Stammers, and uh, going out there and. Pally, of course, um, scoring big goals for our team. 
Yeah, I would say you did a good job. You had a broken foot. Sorelli had like a messed up shoulder. Who knows what Killer was dealing with? I mean, it was absolutely, you know, unbelievable effort. So, you know, everybody appreciated that. I think people, most Lightning fans around here who have seen the Stanley Cup over the last couple of years know that, you know, it's not just about scoring goals here. And it takes a lot more than that. A lot of the dirty stuff, as people say, you know. And so Mm -hmm. all Lightning fans all appreciated, you know, what you did last year. I said, just give this kid some time, okay? (laughs) He'll score all the goals you need next year. And it's already starting to happen. Uh, one question I want to ask you, I don't know if you get to ask this a lot. This is from the second that the Lightning made the trade for you. Uh, I thought that you were Braden Point's twin. You know, now as I sit here closer to you, I, I'm not I'm not seeing it as much. Uh, maybe it's just like the press photos. H- have you gotten that before? Is that something you hear about? I, I get it probably 24-7 on the road when people are asking for autographs. They'll call me. <laughs> they'll say, Braden or like it's close. The hardest part is the names are so close, right. right? So you're walking out, and they're like, "Oh, come over here," and I go, "I'm like, that ain't me." <laughs> like, that what, ain't they give me like a card, or it'll like, be yeah. like a card, yeah. a pointer, and I think at this point, I'm just gonna start signing them. You should do the. Except I'm going over there doing the walk of the shame back to the bus. <laughs> ah, never mind. We don't need you. Like, yeah. Who was the first person that pointed? Was it somebody like on the road, or was it like one of your teammates? He goes, "Hey, you guys kind of, you guys are kind of similar." I don't even really know how it started. Okay, I think I think it might have been the media people. I, I don't really know, but... Um, it was probably the media people. I think yeah. I'm one of those people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. I don't know. I was looking for a cheap tweet. I got a, I got a bunch of favorites on it. So, yeah, there all right. you go. I did not see... It went through your Instagram. I did, uh, you know, a lot of guys on the team love Instagram. Won't mention any names. You know, Hedy, Sergachev, Kalorn. Um, uh, I... <laughs> Did you go to the Halloween party? And did, what did you dress up as? Yeah, I was Willy Wonka. Were you? Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. How'd the costume come together? It was not bad. It was the I was the Willy Wonka of like the the white goggles and the black hair that kind of comes there with the the red coat and stuff. So it was not bad. I thought I did a pretty good job. Did you feel like it paled in comparison to like Nick Paul? No, you, no, 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 no. I mean, it took me two seconds to put my thing on and it took him three hours to get his done. So he went, did you hear about this by the way? He went, Nick Paul went to what Bush gardens to get professional makeup yeah. done. Yeah. Who's got, who's got time for this man? You no know kids. You yeah. Know no kids. kids. No kids. No kids. No kids. Yeah. I'm going to go hang out at Bush gardens all day. Yeah. That's absolutely unbelievable. So yeah, I liked, how were those, all those old Halloween parties? What would you dress up as? I had all kinds of, gadget the one rule i had was just no nothing over your face and that's the hardest thing because yeah. it's hard to like get a drink and you're like the one year i would had this giant fish costume <laughs> i think with the whole thing on i was like nine feet tall and I had this like big hose into my drink and it was just and i'm just in there in my underwear just sweating up a storm oh my god like, it was disgusting <laughs> like, i look like a stage prop for some like broadway <laughs> musical or something you know <laughs> Does anybody not show up? Does anybody like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta leave early. I gotta pick up a kid or anything like that. Or everybody that's there, they're, they're in it for, they're in it for the long haul. They're in it for the long haul. Um, I like yeah. to leave places early. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, so. ninja, you ninja dust? Yeah, oh, I'm out. I'm gone. Yeah. yeah, I'm gone. As soon as they're like, the first, there's a commotion, then I'm out the back door. Yeah. Like no, nobody, nobody knows. So that's, that's your how excuse I, for getting kicked out? That's I had I to get, leave. I'm yeah. sorry. That's, that, yeah, sorry. I shouldn't be here. Oh, Halloween a little crazy. party is usually the, the, usually the best. I mean, you see around the league what some of these guys do and. I think everyone enjoys it and loves it and just seeing all the guys, their personality comes out a little bit and having some drinks together is always fun as, as, as a group, especially doing something, something like that. Is it players only or is Coach Cooper there? Uh, Coach Cooper didn't make it. He didn't it, make no, it, okay. No. Unless someone dresses like him. <laughs> I always admire like the dedication that guys have to like the, the Halloween party. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the one year, I think it was here, like our schedule was crazy all around Halloween and it kept getting pushed back, pushed back. And it was like end of November. And we're like, all right, we're going to have our, our Christmas, our, our uh, Christmas slash Halloween party in November. <laughs> so we had to do that. And it was like, but guys like really wanted to dress up. It was important. I yeah, guess. I know. I see. I, it's real. I feel like out of any sport, like the hockey guys, like they love dressing up for Halloween. It's like almost a religion. So, uh, you know, I think it's just always like, it's just like a known party, you know, like everyone looks for it. Wives, girlfriends. Um, was it better than the Blackhawks Halloween parties that you used to have? So last year, I uh, I haven't even had one because last year COVID started up again. So oh, we were supposed right. to have it the next day, but then the league like 
kind of shut us down a little bit again. So that got scratched. So that was my first one. I thought I'd give myself at least a B. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. I hope, <laughs> I hope pictures surface soon. So you mentioned when you came here last year, they put you in a hotel. You didn't know anything about Tampa. You've been here for a little bit. Anywhere you like to hang out, anywhere you like to go. Uh, not so the fans can stalk you at all, but. Um, or Braden Point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, Braden Point's over there. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Um, no, to be honest, I just I just like hanging out. I just like I'm kind of a homebody, so I like sticking around around my area. I'll go for a walk. Um, it's my girlfriend every once in a while, but uh, other than that, I don't um, do too much unless unless the guys are doing something. I think obviously, if sometimes we'll golf, um, but obviously, right now our schedule is ridiculous. So I heard a great story about you and golf. There was like a TV camera following you around when you were golfing and you were like transplanting like turf all over the place. <laughs> what the Duffing balls, like missing balls almost. And then as soon as the TV cameras left, you went in the head and it just was, like uh, cleaned like, up and took everybody's money. It was like the craziest thing. So we golfed, they were there and I think they went for three holes and it was like embarrassing. Like I was like, I cannot believe this is happening right now. And we were golfing like with one of the pros of the course. So like he was probably, then they left and I've never played golf that good in my entire life. Like the pro <laughs> told us halfway, he's like, I actually thought I was going to have to like quit. He's like, <laughs> and then he was calling me like the biggest sandbagger ever. I'm like, you can't say that because the first three holes, I think I, just picked my ball up, gave myself a DNF and moved on. Right. <laughs> but it's funny because, you know, you play a game in front of 20,000 yeah, people. Know. You would think you'd just be used to that. But yeah, I mean, golf's and I mean, I'm not the best player to begin with, but uh, yeah, that was, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> golf sucks. Sorry. I don't play. I'm very anti-golf. You, you, you're, you're like a more of a mini golf kind of guy. I feel <laughs> like. You're like a, a mini golf pro. I'm right like, there. I'm like more of a homebody minus the walks, I think. Right, so right. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I love Heg's girlfriend Friday night. Hey babe, what do you want to do? Uh, let's just go for a walk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she gets excited about that. Hey, listen, it's tough out there. You got to save money. Uh, I want, I tweeted this this morning. Uh, this was just because of the outcome of last night's game. I'm over shootouts. I hate them. Maybe they're fun for like the casual fan. You think it's a, a good way to end a game? No, I'm not a fan of it. I think there could be some pretty cool ways to end a game, to be honest. Like, I mean, you go from four on four to three on three to two on two to one on one. I was kind of thinking. I stopped at three on three. I mean, it's 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 like obviously would be pretty wild, but I think like one on one, like that's pretty. I mean, you don't do it in the playoffs, anyways. You don't like. Thank you. That's what I've been it's saying. It's not like. I mean, you're just kind of doing it to do it, really, like just to get the game over with so it's not a tie. Do you do you know I mean, obviously three on three is very I think three on three is good um for for that stuff. I mean you don't even need to go lower than that. I mean I think it's tough, obviously. Um there's not too many ways to go about it, but um, I love your idea. I mean, really, they should try. I mean, they're trying a bunch of things with baseball, putting a guy on second base, you know, yeah. for extra inning. So I'm all for that. Um, I think you imagine just seeing like Kucherov and McDavid out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, going out there. So I would love to have front row, <laughs> front row seats to that and see each other. Do you, is there, do you, do you have any, when do you know that Coach Cooper is going to call your name? Like, does it like after like the fourth guy is like, hey, you're going or? That was my first shot ever. That was it? Shoot out, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I didn't wow. think I was getting the call to be honest. So <laughs> I was just I was just ready, ice fishing, ready for the I wonder, the boards. I wonder if that's how Coach Cooper likes it, because I remember he had Ross Colton going for his first one ever. And I just I I don't know, maybe he doesn't want you thinking about it too much. I think at that point it's kind of just like I don't know. Shootouts are tough. You see it all around the league. Like Aho went like seventh. Like he's one of their best yeah. best players, to be honest, or however long it went. So it's I don't know, it's just kind of you working on the like moves the now? Are you going to get some moves together now for this since you never know when you're going to get called? Yeah, a little around the world action yeah, there, I mean, right? I mean, I, the reason I did that, I don't know. I, I had a penalty shot in Minnesota and, um, uh, against Talbot last year in preseason, and I he was on the other side of the net, so I thought I'd try it again, but it, he didn't bite too hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, though. We're going to change the rules. Gary Bettman loves this uh, podcast, and so he's going to watch that. We're going to get to four on four, three on three, two on two, one on one. I love the idea. I think yeah. that's the – listen, do the way you – or just call it a tie. I, I, I remember I did that when I was in, like, summer hockey. We would do that, like, two on two, and then we'd get to one on one. We'd pull our goalie. It would be two on one. <laughs> 
It was like hilarious. That's, that's, I mean, it was fun. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. You got anything else for our man right here? I mean, very busy. Took a lot of time for us today. Really appreciate that. I know he has to get back to his second job as the Braden Point impersonator. So <laughs> it only happens on the road, though. It doesn't happen when you're at home. No, not too much. Okay. No, no it hasn't happened. I think uh, the fans... Fans know their stuff around here. They, they must know. So when they're waiting for you after the game, they know your car, right? They must know. When, yeah, like, they point, must. They yeah, must. Yeah, yeah cause they, they, must. They, they know when they get the picture with Pointer and yeah. stuff. So <laughs> that's awesome, though, that we have those fans that wait for you guys after the game. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, even in Chicago, one of the original six teams, obviously huge. Um, the hockey out here is incredible. Like, getting traded here, I didn't, like, the fans, the people outside of the rink is like absolutely beyond me. Like you're playing hockey in Florida. No one thinks of that, but the passion that people have for the game here is unbelievable. And you love that. And JBB, when we're doing contract negotiations later on, he loves it here. Okay. So yeah. we'll make sure we, we've got this on tape right now. He there's loves a, there's it. a small difference between like Edmonton, Red Deer, Chicago, and then, you know, like Tampa. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. small little differences, but <laughs> nothing big, you know, the man loves the town. Well, listen, we're, we're happy to have you. It was great to have you stop by. You're awesome. Maybe we can do this again sometime. Coburn, what'd you think? What'd yeah, you think about great. eggs, I, hags, bagel? I mean, uh, you couldn't even believe that they called them bagel. Yeah, I was, I was excited. I've, I've never, I'd never really got a chance to really talk to hags. So this is awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for good. taking yeah, the time. Thanks for having me. Guys. This guy right here, first round draft pick of the Atlanta Thrashers. Did yeah. you know that? This well, is, yeah. Hags is so young. He probably doesn't even know what that <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, I know. I know. That's my history lesson for the youngsters these days. Yeah, I so know. I will, I was reading up on hags and he's had like a poster of, Ovi on his wall and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh no! Do you yeah, still do so that? Like, do you have that in the hotel? I'm thinking I'm like, hey, man, Ovi was like drafted after me. Like that. that makes me, you know, I'm like, man, I'm old. But just last question: Are you out of the hotel now? Out of the hotel, I got my own spot, and I'm loving it. There we 20 go. Twenty seconds from the rink, and it's money. There we go. So people can know why. You know, it takes a little while to settle in here when you know you're getting traded and you know for all that, and then you move and you're living out of hotel. Thank you very much, and looking forward to the next episode of the Blog Party. We got a lot of great uh, guests on deck. We were supposed to do a few more today, but they all bailed on us. But Hagel did not. So no, thank you yeah. very much, yeah, man. No problem. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Keep filling the net, bud. <laughs>